welcome back to Trash to Treasure Thursdays with Crafting Cousins times two. I'm Trish and I'm so happy to have you join me. If you're new to our channel, I hope that you will subscribe by clicking the little button below. If you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. For today's project, I'm going to be taking one of these popcorn tins that I got for Christmas. I think that we all get these. They're full with three different kinds of popcorn and they're absolutely delicious. But once you've ate all the popcorn out, you don't really want to leave it sitting around because it's normally decorated for Christmas. I think I can take this and turn it into something that will be beautiful to be left out all year long. So stick around and let's see what I come up with. Okay, so for today's project, we're going to be taking this Christmas popcorn tin that I received and we're going to turn it into a lined basket. Something that can be left out all year long, be pretty and purposeful. So the first thing I did was take the sticker off the bottom and it was really sticky. So I used some Dawn dishwashing liquid and a scrubby pad to get it off with. And then I used a little bit of Goo Gone to take the residue off. We're going to be taking the lid off because we won't be using the lid except for a template, so I'll set it to the side. You can see that I cleaned out the inside of the tin and it is ready to go. Now this is a no-sew project, so we're going to be using our glue gun and you'll need some glue sticks. I like the Gorilla Glue brand. They seem to stick to just about anything. You will need a pen for marking, a good pair of scissors, a piece of fabric to use for your liner. I'm using a scrap piece that I had left over from another project. I like that it looks farmhouse and kind of shabby chic. You're going to need some um, nautical rope or sisal rope, however you want to call it. They do sell this at the Dollar Tree, but I got mine at Hobby Lobby a while back. I, it's a really big roll. It was like $4.99 and I used a 40% off coupon. We're going to need some straight pins to pin our pattern down with. A measuring tape to measure our circumference. And I'm using a piece of wrapping paper to make my pattern for the inside of my um, liner. If you don't have any craft paper, wrapping paper is perfect substitute for that. It's thin enough that you can get your pins through it and it's large enough to be able to make those big pattern pieces. So the first thing that I wanted to do was cut out the bottom of my liner for my tin. Now you need to make it a little bit bigger than your tin because you need a seam allowance. So I thought the lid of this would be perfect for that because it is bigger than my tin so that it can fit on top of it. So I laid it on my fabric and we're going to trace around it. And that's going to give us the bottom piece of our liner. Now, this is the piece that I cut for the sides of the liner. And the way I got my measurements was I took my measuring tape and measured the circumference of my tin, which is about 28 inches. So I cut my piece of paper just a little over 28 inches because I need that seam allowance as well. Now I want my liner to actually fold over the top of my tin. So my tin is seven inches tall. I'm going to add three inches to that so I will have a seam allowance but I'll also have a piece that can um, fold over the top of the tin and just give it a little more detail. So now that I have my pieces, we're going to cut them out and it's just a matter of following the lines to get our pattern pieces cut out. For time's sake, I'm going to go away and take care of this and I will be right back. Okay, so now we have our pieces for our liner. I have the side piece and the bottom piece and we're going to join them together with glue. I want to make a seam along the side of my piece. I'm going to leave a hole at the very top so that I can run a piece of twine through there just to give it a little more of a decorative touch. So let's take our glue and just run a bead right along that side there and then press your fabric down and you want to work pretty fast because it will um, 
set really fast. Just don't burn yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. I do have a tendency to try to just make it all line up perfect and you don't have to do that. It's, it's completely fine. We'll go a little bit further and then I'm going to skip a place and then I'll finish off the end there. So let's stick that down and now we have a seam for our liner. As you see it's stuck and it left a little place there to run our twine through. Now we're going to join our side to the bottom of our liner. This can be a little tedious, so I'm going to get started showing you how to do it. I'll go away for a moment and finish it up, and then I will come back and we'll go from there. So you're going to do it just like you did your side. You're going to take and run a bead of glue right around that edge. Don't do too much at one time because it sets fast, and also be very careful not to burn yourself. So we're going to stick that down just like that and keep going all the way around. Run another little bead there. Go just a little bit further and stick the fabric down. And you're just going to keep doing that until you've worked your way all the way around the bottom of the tin. Okay, so we have the bottom of this glued down and we have like a bucket now and it should fit right down inside of our tin to make our lining. I did have to release this at the top. I will fix that back when I do my hemming. But now it's going to fit down over the side and you have a lined bucket. So let's take this back out for now and we're going to put rope around our tin to make it look more like a basket. So we're going to take our, our rope here and we're literally just going to glue it all the way down around. Run a line of bead, a line of glue there and take your rope and stick it down and then just hold it for a second and it's going to stick and you're just going to keep going all the way around your tin until you've completely covered it. Now for time's sake, I'm going to go off camera and finish this up and I will be right back. Okay, and I'm back. That took longer than I thought it would. I ran out of rope, so I had to go to Hobby Lobby and get some more to finish up. I knew I wasn't going to take it all the way to the top, but I only had enough rope to take it about that far, so I needed some more. And sure enough, I was right. This sisal rope at Hobby Lobby is $4.99. I used a 40% off coupon, so it cost me about three bucks. This is what is left over. I did still have quite a lot left, so I'll have lots more projects ahead. And there was a small rope that held this together, is sisal as well. So I made a cute little bow out of it that I'm going to use on it. I decided that I would close up that whole side of the liner and then I'll attach the bow to it. So I have closed up the liner and I have started hemming it. I'll finish it up right here. Just run a bead of glue right along that edge and then just turn it over and hold it down. And that is hemming it and giving it a nice finished look so that it won't unravel. So now see whenever I roll it over, I'll have a finished edge. Now since this doesn't go to the top and this is a Christmas tin, I actually don't have to do anything to this, but I decided that I'm going to put a coat of um, chalk paint on it just to finish that up. Since my fabric is black and white and it had quite a bit of black in it, I decided that I would use black chalk paint to finish it. So I'm just going to do a layer right around the top. Well, it's probably going to take at least two coats because it's not going on well. Maybe that brush is pretty dried out. Let's, let's try a new brush and see how that works. I wasn't sure if it would work or not. Oh yeah, this, br this brush works a lot better. So this may only take one 
coat since I have a decent brush now. You have to be careful with your brushes. Make sure you clean them properly. I obviously was in a hurry and didn't get that other brush cleaned well last time because it's now dry and it was leaving streaks all in my paint, which is what will happen if your brush is not cleaned properly. So we're just gonna go around the top of this and paint it just to give it a finished edge so that you don't see the decoration that we covered up with the rope. Again, it really doesn't matter if you do this step because your lining is going to roll over the edge and it will cover this, but I just wanted to finish it off so that if I take my lining out to wash it, I still have a finished edge around the top of my basket. So, let's, and I could have taken the rope all the way to the top of the basket, but I would have had to make my liner be um, bigger so that it would fit over the rope, and I did not take that into consideration when I was making it, so I did not make it um, big enough to fit around that. So I, I like it with the, the paint. I think that finished off my edge and it looks good. I am gonna lay my brush down. You're gonna see that, but I promise that I will go and clean it properly as soon as I am through with this. So now see my basket has that black top. You don't see the decoration that was on it anymore. My liner is all hemmed up and ready to go and you're just going to put it in and uh, let me see is this dry yet actually it's pretty dry okay so we'll put this in and then this rolls over the edge and it does fit very tight because I cut it the same size as my tin I should have left a little bit of an allowance there a little more than what I left for the seam I guess it does fit I had it on a little bit earlier let me just pop it around and get it on there this is real life folks this is what happens when you don't get your measurements exactly the way you want them when you're doing this so now I do have it on it is a little tight so that tells me that if I do this again, or if you're doing this, make sure that you cut um, maybe a half an inch longer um, on the sides would have given me enough space that I didn't have to force this down. It would have just rolled over the edge like I wanted it to. But I got it down and it's fine. It fits, it was just a little tight. So now it's all in there and I have a lined basket. See, how cute is that? Okay, I made this cute little bow with the rest of the sisal that, or that small piece of sisal that was on there. So I'm gonna go find where I did my seam. There it is. And I'm gonna just put this little bow on there just to finish that up and cover that seam. I'll put a drop of glue there and stick my little bow on there and hold it down for just a second, let it dry. And there you go, a cute little basket made from a leftover popcorn tin. I love it. I think it's going to go well in my home and I can throw things in, probably craft stuff because let's be honest, I have way too much and keep it all together. So that's today's project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspired you to maybe do a project of your own. Um, if you have any tins, it doesn't have to be a big one like a popcorn tin. You could even use the little cookie tins or coffee tins, any kind of tin that you would like to cover with your sisal rope and it makes a beautiful basket. And you can make a liner for it. You actually don't have to make a liner for it. You could run your rope all the way up to the top and just have just a plain basket and leave the inside um, the way it is with just the tin. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. I hope that you will come back often and see us each week. We try to have different things to um, keep your attention and maybe give you some inspiration. 
we will not have a video tomorrow we rest on Friday but join us Saturday for craft chat Kay and I are going to be going over what you need if you're thinking about getting into craft fairs what to expect what kind of items you need to get started and what to look for so we hope that you will join us and until next time bye